Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for the end, the last episode. So yeah, so this is the end, the last episode of Elite Wine TV. No review this time, though, since I started this channel with Elite Wine, sorry, with 337 Cabernet Sauvignon from Noble Vines, I thought I should end with it too. So I'll be sipping on this wine throughout the show. So let's get a little bit of wine into my glass before I continue to read the script. In my rehearsal, it didn't take very long to do this, so I also wasn't pretending to stop to take sips of wine, which I will be doing between little sections of the script. Alrighty. By the way, it's the 2017 County of Sauvignon And uh, yeah, I'm not gonna spit, though I'll leave this here just for branding purposes for the last time, old time's sake. Haven't decided what the new spit bucket's gonna be. I may just keep this one, just take the stickers off, or at least take the Elite Wine sticker off, keep the pressable on there. All right, so bottom line, as far as this wine, it's a decent wine for under 15 bucks. It's fruit forward, fairly tasty. Well, at least the last time I had it, it was. So let's, Try it real quick just to make sure, right? Well, I said I can do a review of the wine. Let me describe the wine. So black fruit, like blackberry, raspberry, and these are really super ripe. It's like a fruit pie, a fruit compote, or fruit jam or jelly. Not quite jammy, but just has like this kind of fruit jelly, darker, darker fruit jelly component to it. Cardamom, that type of stuff. Yeah. Is it my favorite wine in the world? No, but for me, it has like a special place in my heart. So I do enjoy the wine. It's really got this richness, this vanilla bean in there. Uh, there's got the really rich and luscious, darker and, and red fruits. You have this creaminess, this pie aspect I use a lot of times with wines like this. It's not a bad wine for like under 15 bucks. So let's get back to the script. So now for the explanation of what's going on. So for years, I've said that if I was going to do this all over again, I would never use the name 1337 wine for a podcast or YouTube channel about wine. You know, the whole reason I came up with this name was due to this wine. I won't go into the whole story again because I've done it before and it's also on the website. Just know that I thought the 337 was 1337. So what caused this? So a few weeks ago, I was looking at my fellow YouTube wine reviewers, and while stats really shouldn't matter, they, they kind of ultimately do. I've been doing this thing for 11 years. I barely have 250 subscribers. And meanwhile, there are others that do this that have 1,000, 2,000 or more. Some even have like tens of thousands. So it's not like a wine channel really gets millions or even hundreds of thousands of subscribers, but you can get a good amount of subscribers. So even so, I took a hard look at what others have gotten success in their channels, and not just wine stuff, but other ones and what I haven't. And I know my content's solid. My production is as good as anyone else and even better than a lot of people in my genre. What I do, honestly, nobody else does. I'm pretty unique in this part of the wine type of thing. Nobody combines wine reviews, interviews, Skype interviews, visiting wineries, going to conferences, things like that. No one does what I do anywhere that I've seen. There are people that 
do some of those, maybe a couple of the same things, but nobody really does the full complete thing. And I really want to work on that with the next show. All right, so why? I might have to put more wine in here. So one thing in my opinion is that the name of the show is a big hindrance. Even when talking to people uh, in person, I have to explain the name of the show. So a name change, I think, will also help people find the channel. 1337 Wine really has no meaning to enthusiasts. 1337 does have meaning to geeks, gamers, and hackers, but these two groups don't really have enough crossover to make that work. Okay, so change the name is all I need, right? No. There are some fundamentals to the show that others do that I don't do that need to be looked at. First of all, almost everyone in YouTube does what is known as a jump cut. Uh, you've already seen them in this episode, the last two episodes you've seen them. Uh, these are edits that allow you to cut out extraneous clips, mistakes, saying um, uh, things like that. Also, like in between little sections of your script, you can cut them out. The one thing that is totally against the idea of 1337 Wine, that is not what this channel was founded on. You know, I start the camera and I don't stop. So while a continuous take is great in reality, I don't really need to do that until I actually review the wine. So right there, that's a jump cut if I hadn't already been doing it because I poured the wine and you didn't see me actually pour the wine, but the wine, the wine level got a little bit higher. Anyway, as I was saying, uh, I adopted this type of style after Gary Vaynerchuk's Wine Lair Ray TV because that's what he did. And I felt that by doing this, I would ensure the integrity of my reviews. In other words, I didn't do retakes on my thoughts of a wine. You get to see everything in real time. And for me, I feel that that's really important. As a matter of fact, one of my reviews for the Jacobian Hobbs uh, wine I did a couple months ago, uh, one of the Jacobians, one of the brothers emailed me and to say it was really refreshing, the type of review I did, but also to see the development of me exploring the wine. If you do jump cuts and you cut out all that, all that little stuff, all of a sudden the person just makes these conclusions. You're like, how do they get those conclusions? Maybe not that bad, but you know what I mean? Like you don't see the progression and that's what I really want to preserve um, going forward. So the new show will still have that element where I don't do cuts. I don't stop the camera just to do my tastings in between tasting. I, I just, some shows in the past I've seen them do, they'll like, they'll like, just like, they'll be reviewing. You hear like the, the keywords and that's it. And they cut out all the little pauses and ums and like just sitting there smelling and tasting. So yeah. Anyway, tangents. So if you watch my show a lot, you know, I go on all the time. So by having an actual script I can stick with means that I can focus on what's important from an episode. My feeling is that if viewers here to see my opinion and information on wine, all the extra stuff. Now that doesn't mean I won't do occasional life updates. That just means I'll stick to a script for that. Some of the channels are successful without scripts. And what they do is they make like little notes and you've seen me do it. I've been trying to do the notes, but then I go off script, which technically I'm doing right now. Um, but I really want to kind of explain a little bit more, but they'll, they'll not have a script and they're really, they'll, so they have notes or they just kind of riff. They just kind of talk about their day and that really makes them more like a vlog. And my channel really isn't a vlog. Uh, I'm also going to have additional content. I plan to have episodes that cover many different topics on wine, beer, spirits, and other related subjects. So these will be episodes on just that kind of topic instead of a wine review. And these will be mostly consumer level shows as far as like the educational or, or informational type of stuff. Now with a new name comes a new logo, an intro, music, website, email, all that kind of stuff. And I've already completed the main logo work, email, and almost all my accounts have been officially changed over to the new name. You may have noticed it already. I mean, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. I haven't touched Tumblr because I never use Tumblr, but I still send Instagram to Tumblr. And one of the Facebook pages, one of the fan pages still says 1337 Wine. Facebook's being a butthead about letting me change it. So I'm kind of waiting for the whole thing to be done where the website actually is up and running where right now it's kind of a staging site so you really can't go to it once all that's up and running 
I'll try to get the, the normal fan page, the one that I interact with all the time, switched over to Wine World TV. So what am I going to be working on for the next six weeks um, is the rest of the stuff. I couldn't say. Oh, you couldn't say, Siri. I'm not talking to you. Anyway, um, I'll be doing mock shows to see what works and what doesn't work. Plus, I'll be trying to get used to the teleprompter and trying to make it look as natural as possible. Hope to have a polished new version of the show starting with episode one. So speaking of episode numbering, this is episode 534. WWTV will start with episode one. It's really a new show. However, all of my prior shows are still part of its history. Think of it like a sports team that relocates to a new city and then they change their name, Tennessee Titans, and they carry their history with them, their records, their, their stats. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'll retain all of the prior episodes of 1337 Wine. I'll definitely make references to prior shows in future shows. And so you're, you're still going to be able to see all that. In addition to all the changes, look for logoed and other merchandise. Not this because this is somebody else's stuff. So I'm hoping to have, you know, t-shirts, hats, glasses, you know, wine openers, whatever, with either the logo or just wine-related stuff that will also give me an additional revenue stream. And hopefully I'll have at least most of that stuff ready by launch date. I do have some other plans for other shows or for Wine World TV specifically. And uh, like I said, some are, some are related to the show, some are not. Once I get closer to accomplishing that stuff, I'll, I'll go and talk about those. But for right now, I've got plans. One last thing about the change, I know I've already alluded to this. Basically, I want more subscribers. So when this channel first started, it was my diary of studies. And I mean, I've done some really good accomplishments with the Court of National Sommeliers. I'm still studying for my advanced exam. That's, you like the beard, by the way? That's what this is, the study beard. It's been four months since I've, as far as you see, it's been over four months since I've, since I've shaved, but it's been four months since I shaved. And while my studies haven't been going as well recently because I've been dealing with the changeover to WWTV plus just all the craziness that's going on in the world, it's very distracting, which I'm sure all of you can relate to. I'm still studying. I'm still doing this, but the show was really meant to be the diary of my studies for the intro exam. And then once I passed that, I almost stopped. And then I said, like, you know, I want to keep doing, keep doing this. So let's continue to do it. I'll take the certified exam. When I took the certified exam, I seriously thought about stopping all this, but the show had given me access, had given me access to people in wineries and travel and allowed me to do things that while people in my industry get to do, they don't always get to do the same things I do in the elite wine persona. When I got to Morton's, that made it even more so because I was a buyer at a fine dining restaurant. Now where I'm at now, I'm not the boss, but I do make some decisions when it comes to buying stuff. So having the show still is a great way for me to expand my horizons and go meet people, whether it's virtually or in person. But right now, ultimately the goal for all this right now is to gain subscribers. And ideally, I want to have enough so that I'm able to monetize the channel. I definitely don't expect to get rich, but I'd like it to supplement my income. Now I do have a second channel that I'm hoping to have the same thing happen. That channel actually has more potential to get a lot of subscribers. It's my behind the scenes channel and that goes into more in depth with how I produce this. And that is more of a general purpose, a general interest channel, not people who want to know about wine because I really don't talk about wine on that show. Though there's been like one or two episodes I had a glass of wine um, after doing one of these sessions of, of wine reviews. Looking back, I probably should have just not had the wine, but the bottom line is on that, that those shows are meant to teach people how to do things or kind of show them how I do what I do to produce the show. So far as back to this show, while I've titled the show The End, I would say you really can call it The Transition. Um, 
it's a transition to a new show, a new era, and I look forward to doing something cool. And while a lot of this is going to be the same, I'm hoping to have some differences in what you see in the show. And also I'm going to try to have more Skype interviews because there's a ton of people out there that now can do Skype interviews that wouldn't do it 11, 10, 9, even 8 years ago or even less than like even 2, 3, two, three years ago. So they're more inclined to do Skype interviews. When travel is able to happen again, I hope to do some traveling. Though realistically on the financial side of things, it's probably going to take a couple years for me to actually do any true travel outside of like Texas because my focus is um, when it comes time to take the advanced exam, that's where all my focus monetarily not all of it, but as far as travel money, that's where all my money focus goes to other than just your normal day-to-day -day stuff. So yeah, that, that's going to be it. Dude, it's been a wild 11 years, and I look forward to 11 more years or more in the future. Salute.